Do you have Moon and Neptune aspect in your horoscope, especially when the Moon and Neptune are conjunct in the same sign, or when they are opposite each other, which or when they are 90 degrees from each other? These are the hard aspects that will be very strongly felt if you have them. So what does having the Moon with Neptune aspect mean? And you'll notice this especially for women because the women act a lot through their moon, through their emotional nature. Well, the moon is our sensitivity and Neptune is the most sensitizing planet of all these people. Uh, the most compassionate and sensitive people you've probably met, especially moon conjunct Neptune. And they can feel others' pain if they're in a room with others. Uh, they don't even know without talking to themselves if one of these people is sad or happy they'll psychically pick up this emotion like a sponge so they have to be very careful who they surround themselves with and that they choose more uh, pure more uh, uh, kind environments and also they'll usually avoid harshness vulgarity crudeness around them because they do not like suffering suffering is too much for them uh, even emotional suffering it can it can almost emotionally uh, drown them. So these people would often need time away. They need time to let go of all those psychic impressions they soaked up like a sponge. So often such people would have a great need to escape either by watching television, by spending time alone, by doing something spiritual like meditating, by learning how to relax and let go of those emotions. And in the worst case scenario, by getting drunk, it's a combination for some addictions because of the high sensitivity of the person. Uh, and in the best case scenario is a combination for a mystical spiritual figure who is attuned to the high vibrations, to the refined beauty and uh, aspect of creation. Because Neptune is the most spiritual planet, is the planet of merging with the divine. And these people are always craving for something bigger that the material world cannot give them. Initially, while they're young, they might think that having this or having that, this relationship, that person, or achieving this will bring emotional satisfaction to them but they later find out that even when they achieve these material things these outer things within themselves they still keep having this tremendous longing for something bigger and higher than themselves which only uh, merging with higher consciousness can bring them which only uh, striving for God or experiencing some kind of an ecstasy through God through meditation can give them and again as I said because of this yearning for merging with something greater they can fall into addictions if they try and find it to the wrong places and you see how some of the most frustrated and uh, uh, people that have lost their way which might be drug addicts have some of the most evolved combinations moon Neptune at the same time people with the same combination can be most mystically a mystically inspired, creatively inspired. This is a combination a lot of musicians and artists and actors have because again they get the kind of tuning into those higher channels of Neptune and they connect with the subconsciousness of, of the of uh, the how is the word the common subconsciousness uh, and uh, they can be extremely creative poets art artists photographers visionaries at the same time mystics but in the lower cases as I said they might be escapism and there is always need to spend time alone and they have so much compassion those people they so much identify with the suffering of others and they would help others if possible because they feel their pain very evolved you know in that way <clears throat> But they have to find a way to protect themselves emotionally at the same time. And because they can feel others' pain, they often can identify with the pain of another and they can start feeling sorry for themselves because they don't actually differentiate that the pain they're feeling is compassion for the overall state of humanity or some sadness coming from another person so they start feeling because they're constantly so sensitive they start feeling sorry for themselves it's a very common manifestation of such people to feel sorry for themselves and to fall into some kind of a dreamy lethargic kind of uh, moods and states uh, which uh, or fantasizing a lot daydreaming and they can use this energy of course for something productive this high sensitivity as I said of something creative they need creative outlets I have this combination and definitely it's something so important also the moon shows uh, what you uh, what environment you feel accustomed to what environment you seek out around you to feel comfortable and Neptune is very re refined influence so they don't like environments which are crude which are rough they can really stress the emotionally I have a friend who has the conjunction moon and Neptune 
Neptune together very close. And I remember she told me, I never go on the tube because I hate seeing the poor people there. <laughs> and she's not even that rich, but she said it upsets me. So she only takes cabs, even though she wasn't so financially well off. I'm giving you one extreme example, but this is something that can, how it can manifest. Also, the moon shows the primary nurturing figure in your life when you were growing up. Sometimes it might be the mother, usually it's the mother. Sometimes it can be another, maybe grandmother or father. And it's possible that with the moon, because the moon, you kind of, uh, with Neptune, Neptune dissolves whatever it touches. So maybe the mother figure was missing or was not so, uh, was not so in touch with reality, was a bit spaced out, was not concerned with material, practical issues. So the person could not very much rely on them or for uh, in better cases, maybe the mother was more artistic, if a mural person, the mother figure. Uh, or a person who was, you know, somehow more mystical in a sense. Uh, so from the worst case scenario, the mother missing or alcoholic or emotionally unstable to the higher levels of moon Neptune, which is this more refined ephemeral figure that even the person cannot put a finger to, but uh, they'll, they'll tend to idealize. Uh, and such people, when they're forced, when they're, uh, when they're confronted with a difficult issue, unless there is a difficult planet also like Mars or Saturn with the moon to make them more tougher, these people will try to escape it, not to commit to avoid confronting the difficult issue because of this emotional sensitivity they have. They would prefer to be even almost like in a bubble emotionally surround themselves to see whatever they want so they can sometimes be a little bit delusional and see what they want as long as it makes them feel better. Uh, and they can, But they can use this in healthy ways by visualizing positive out outcomes. They have great mindful visualization. And uh, there is like a bit of a magical aura around them, a bit of a magical, mystical aura around them. Uh, and also very often because they feel the other's emotions so strongly, uh, they cannot see where they finish and where the other person starts. So they often cannot di differentiate what is yours and what is mine. And they often don't have boundaries and they'll try to merge with someone almost like, like a parasite, you know, sucking onto another and be saved by that other person. If someone gives them some nurturing, some comfort, makes them feel a little bit good, they would try to, you know, to hold on to that person and, and live through, you know, have them around uh, or uh, in, in other cases they just they have a very strong desire and need and longing to merge with another person and those people who are not very spiritual and i think maybe 99 percent of humanity are not they're trying to find and to merge with another so they have a lot of you know to, to they might idealize the partner they might idealize relationships they might idealize certain situations and they often end up quite disappointed because reality is harsh and it never is idealized and as pure as those people long for because they have very pure, beautiful images of what the life should be and their dreams of the future. Uh, and no one real can give them this, you know. Uh, so there is this constant longing till they learn. Basically, the best advice for such people is to try and uh, instead of trying to get this satisfaction from another person or another thing, they try, they can just give instead because this is how they'll balance their energy, they'll compassion, maybe working with poor, maybe helping others, maybe somehow uh, attending to someone, taking care of someone a lot, uh, giving selflessly, you know, and uh, devoting themselves to another. Of course, without allowing another to take advantage of them, because this is also another danger with Moon-Neptune uh, combination that they can, you know, they can allow another to you know, uh, to, to sacrifice themselves for another so much because they're so sensitive. Uh, and again, as I said, the best ways for, to deal with this is develop some spiritual interest, develop some meditative relaxation, time alone, uh, time by the sea, Neptune rules the ocean, this can be very healing for them, or time in fantasy and all this creative fantasy they have put it into something productive uh, and rather than just daydreaming a lot. But, if it's not an unhealthy way of escaping, even then daydreaming helps as well. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, da, da, da. Mm, I think we've mentioned most of all uh, the need to escape and um, the tendency to, to run into fantasy world. And Yes, 
So often they, they would either long a lot for the past that is gone or they would fantasize for a beautiful future, for a wonderful, perfect future. And it might be hard for them to focus on the present. So, you know, when you have one leg in the past and one in the future, they say you're pissing on the now. <laughs> and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very important for them to find ways to ground themselves, to walk on the ground barefoot. It's one great way. Be in nature more. Uh, find, you know, groundedness within yourself. It's so important to learn to be in the now. And, and then this longing and this emotional suffering that often they're so attuned to um, can start working in their favor. Thank you.